Hello everybody and welcome to Attaché, the show that gets you in, out, and around some of the world's greatest cities. My name is Alex Hunter, I'll be your Sherpa on this international adventure, and today we're on the Emerald Isle in the wonderful city of Dublin, a city I love and I cannot wait to share with you. Let's go! No, Greg, the camera! Dublin, a city so positively dripping with culture that it makes the rest of us look borderline barbaric. Literature, art, music, food, drink, definitely the drink. Dublin has made immeasurable and indelible contributions to all of them. But it's not just a city for the culture-hungry tourist. No, sir. In the last decade, Ireland, and particularly Dublin, has emerged as an international business capital and a major European transport hub. And that is where we'll begin our show. With a major overhaul of its airport infrastructure and some flyer-friendly tax breaks, Dublin is now a popular transit point for passengers flying in and out of Europe. It's particularly popular as a stopover flights from the US because, and this is so cool, you can clear US immigration in Dublin. So let's say you're traveling from London to New York via Dublin. While your plane's being refueled in Dublin, you can go through U.S. passport control in Dublin Airport so that when you get to New York, you don't have to go through U.S. passport control, which at JFK is a nightmare. You go into a domestic terminal, right out into the arrivals hall, just like you've arrived from Miami or Des Moines. Dublin is one of only three airports outside of North America that have this feature, and it's an absolute gem. So when you're booking your next flight between North America and Europe, or vice versa, it's well worth looking to see if a stop in Dublin can help with costs and connections. And for my British friends, Ireland doesn't have the air passenger duty. So if you're flying to North America, Asia, or the Middle East, it's definitely worth looking into flying out of Dublin. You could save a boatload of cash on those taxes that we get lumbered with. Okay, so you've arrived at Dublin Airport. How do you get into town? Your options are pretty limited. There's no train or subway service, although they're planning on it. So your best bet is a taxi or one of the airport bus services that leave from just outside the arrivals hall. An airport bus will cost about nine euros to get into the center of Dublin and takes about 30 minutes. A taxi from the airport to the city center will cost about 25 euros, but will be much faster. That said, Dublin traffic can be nasty at times, so plan accordingly. Once you're in town, there are a number of options for getting around. For starters, there's the Lewis Tram, which has two lines serving different parts of the city. The red line runs in an east-west direction, and the green line, which serves the south side of Dublin. Both lines have frequent stops throughout Dublin, but if you need to change between lines, be warned that it's a 15-minute walk between the green line terminus and the red line terminus. You can grab a ticket on the platform, and a single ticket costs one euro and 50 cents. If you think you might use Dublin's public transport system even just a couple of times, it's worth grabbing a Leap Card, Dublin's stored value ticketing system. It works on Dublin's extensive network of buses, the Lewis Tram, and local railway lines, and it offers discounts over regular paper tickets. For figuring out how to get around Dublin on public transport, be sure to download Transport for Ireland's very handy mobile app, which can help you plan your route. There's a link to the app in the show notes below. Google Maps is also excellent for planning your journey on public transport. And because the majority of Dublin's buses now have free Wi-Fi, you don't need to worry about roaming charges. If public transport isn't your thing, then Uber has an extensive network here. And you can hail one of Dublin's 12,000 taxis, that's more than New York City, by the way, with the local taxi app Halo, or with your hand. Links to both apps are in the show notes below. Since 2002, Ireland has used the euro as its currency. I know, it surprises a lot of people, but it's true. I checked on Wikipedia. If you're not familiar with the euro, it's the currency used in 19 countries across Europe, and there are 100 cents in a euro. Right now, the euro converts to around 1.6 US dollars, 1.8 Australian dollars, and 1.3 British pounds. Check the show notes below for our favorite exchange rate tools. But despite the euro being pretty weak right now, Dublin is still a surprisingly expensive city. Let's do the rundown. A cup of coffee will cost you around two euros 50, and you're never far away from coffee because there's a Starbucks right here and one across the street. A pint of the beautiful black stuff will cost you around five euros. 
and the most reliable indicator of a nation's cost, the good old Big Mac, will run you about three euros and 80 cents, about four dollars. And for more on what can be called Ireland's greatest export, don't forget to check out our food section later in the show. And yes, beer is food. That is all beer. So what about that always delicate subject of tipping? Like a lot of European cities, there's not a strong tipping culture here in Ireland, but there are a lot of places where it is starting to become the norm. In restaurants with table service, 10 to 15% is a very reasonable tip for a good meal with good service. Oh, by the way, watch out for those discretionary service charges tacked onto your bill, especially at more touristy locations. Taxi drivers won't expect a tip, but it is cool to round up the fare to the nearest euro. If you're watching the show, and thank you for watching the show, chances are you don't have a whole lot of time in each of the cities you visit. You're here for meetings, for business, or you're passing through on your way to another far-flung destination. But it would be unforgivable of us not to talk about the food and drink in each of the cities we visit. Because as far as I'm concerned, the fastest way to expose yourself to a city's culture is to immerse yourself in its food and drink. But since time is short and our show is even shorter, I'm just going to pick that one thing that you simply cannot miss while you're here. Ah. Taste the oyster. Ireland has great food. Comforting food. Storied food. From local classics like the halfpenny breakfast at the winding stair to more international flavors. You're never going to go hungry in Dublin. But the dish I want to talk about today is the dish that is arguably Ireland's most famous export. And it isn't even a dish. I'm challenging you to find me anything more beautiful than a freshly poured pint of Guinness. So I asked the guys on the Dublin subreddit on reddit.com where I should go to find the perfect pint of Guinness. And almost without exception, the answer was Mulligan's here on Poolbeg Street. If you've got a pint of Guinness, there's a tip, no, a requirement that you should know. Wait, just wait. Before you grab its irresistible blackness, let it do its thing. Let it, let it settle, let it relax. Just like you wouldn't grab a steak right off the grill and cut into it, neither would you grab a pint of Guinness right after it's been poured. I promise you, the wait will be worth it. So that's the attaché guide to Dublin. If you think there's anything we've missed, or you live in Dublin and there's something you want everybody to know about this wonderful city, don't forget to leave it in the comments below. And while you're there, subscribe to our channel because we have a whole load of great cities coming up for you. But until next time, 